हेलो एवरीवन गुड मॉर्निंग गुड इवनिंग जो जाता हूँ तो कैसे रहने दिन आ रहा है नमस्ते टू एवरीबॉडी वेलकम टू द फोर्थ डे ऑफ आवर सेमिनार ऑन अप्लाइड बाय इंफॉर्मेटिक्स इन एग्रीकल्चर एंड मेडिसिन वी आर रियली ग्लैड दैट यू हैव बीन फॉलोइंग अस फॉलोइंग इवन विद ऑल द टेक्निकल सेशन एंड यू एस ऑल सो दैट what we will be doing today and you got a little bit of glimpse of what you are going to practice today itself so uh, as we get more technical i hope that you have received an email from me uh, showing all the instructions that you need to set up a uh, mobile extrom in order to connect to the google cloud computing uh, for uh, the google cloud computing uh, napa and afu have uh, generously funded us uh, for this uh, seminar so i want to especially thank uh, both of these organizations for providing us the resources uh, in order to uh, to do all the computing uh, computing tasks and uh, in the uh, in the instruction that i provided uh, vivek adhikari has mentioned that there has been a mistake so instead of uh, when opening a mobile extrem on step number 1 instead of clicking terminal you need to click on session but don't worry about that we will uh so you uh, a hands on on how to actually do that again uh, as we start the session so uh to start the today's session i'd like to invite dr uh, ananta acharya to to lead the session dr acharya thank you uh thank you dr podel and uh, thank you everyone for participating again again uh more than 100 people uh, doing hands on on linux and biomedics that's really encouraging uh, and and thank you uh, to Dr. Kadaria uh, and and AFU and again um, I really want to uh, recognize Napa and AFU both for the support uh, they are providing on the Zoom. Uh, we have to pay for the Zoom and also for the uh, server that we are hosting on the Google Cloud. So I would also like to really thank them. Uh, and also with me today we have we have we have uh, Dr. Powell, Dr. Parajuli, and Mr. Subedi uh, helping uh, through. all all these hands on uh, sessions uh, so uh, in the beginning i would like to invite again dr podel uh, to go on how to install the mobax storm it looks like all, many of you have already done that but how how to install and how to connect to the server uh, and then i'll uh, go through how to start some of analyzing some of the data and then uh, dr uh, parajuli and dr uh, mr swedi will um, join me time to time uh, adding any comments or uh, showing you uh, what are the different commands are doing so okay dr podel uh, we are we are hearing echo from someone uh, please mute uh, if you are not speaking it is mute i think everybody is muted now do you hear any sound now it's good okay perfect Right, hello everybody. So, uh, as I uh, sent you the uh, instructions to use the uh, keys that we provided into Mobile Extrem, so that you can connect to the uh, Google Cloud, I'm going to now show you how to actually do it. So, this is uh, an interface of a Mobile Extrem. So, it will look something very similar. I, I have a little bit more systems here, which, in your case, it might be empty. So, the first thing that you want to do is you go to session right here that says start a new remote session okay so just go ahead and click it once you click that you will uh, see a new window coming up and what we want to do is we want to go to ssh right here which stands for secure cell session go there and uh, there are a few things that we will put a lot of things so first thing i want you to do is go to advanced ssh settings right here and put a click on use private key this is where we are going to load the private key that i emailed you so click uh, at this uh, box right here so that you can search your uh, files so the afu napa.ppk the, the one that you probably have already downloaded go ahead and uh, take a look at that file and click it to open it once you have open so there should be some kind of a uh, link showing to that uh, file right here the next thing you need to now specify is the remote host so if you go to I think system so step number 
seven or eight, there is an image that's the uh, remote host uh, number or step five actually. So just on the remote host, type the IP address for, for the Google Cloud. I got a message to zoom in. And if you cannot see it uh, properly, please uh, take a look at the uh, notes that I sent you for the instructions. And the one thing that we put is the remote host. The number should be in step number five of the instructions. Then you need to specify the user right here. It shows default. Just delete that. And this of a default just type AFU. Okay, so uh, these are all the things that we will need right now. One thing is username, your remote host, and then the private key that I provided in an email that uh, you might have downloaded. The file is called afunapa.ppk. So after doing that, now we are ready to connect. So at that point, just hit OK. And you will enter into a new uh, new window. It says authenticating with public key AFU and ask for, for a key AFU. So what it is asking for you is to provide a, a passphrase in order to get connected. The passphrase is NAPA, N-A-P-A, -A, all small letters. So you can go ahead here and type N-A-P-A -A and hit her. So even if you type the, uh, the cursor will not move but don't worry about that, just type the four, uh, four characters. So once you type that, you should, you should log in automatically. Okay, so uh, once you are here, you can go ahead and check your present working directory with the command pwd, and you will be in a directory called slash data slash user. So this will be the correct location uh, for you to, to be. And if you type ls, so you will see a lot of uh, people have already created a directory in their own name on their first name, last name, and the last five digits of your phone number. So if you haven't done this already, I encourage you, all of you, to uh, create a new directory. So this will be mkdir, and with your name, like for me, it will be Dave Orel, and then the last five digits of your phone number. So you can do uh, something like this. So create a directory with your first name, last name, and five, uh, five, last five digits of your phone number. Okay, and then once you do that, you can again uh, check to make sure that your name is right there. So the the one that I made now, this is the directory that, that I built right now. And I want you to log in into your own directory. So right now I'm logging into my my directory. So if you hit a tab after a few letters, it will automatically try to pick up. So that's how uh, I was able to type that fast. So you get into your own directory using CD, which stands for change directory. And once you are there, you can do LS to see if there are any files. I don't have anything right there. And if you do PWD for present working directory, you will again see that you should be inside data, users, and then this will be your own name with your five uh, last five digits of your phone number. So once you have this, then uh, that is all. We will be starting uh, from here. So if you have any uh, confusion or questions right there, then you can uh, please put it on the chat box. And if you have any issues with mobile XM, then you can uh, go back and refer to the instruction uh, manual that I sent you. Just be aware that the, uh, on the first step, instead of Going to the terminal, you should go to the uh, session. Okay, thank you. Uh, back to you, Dr. Atar. Yeah, it looks like a lot of people are having trouble uh, following it. I think we're too a little bit fast. Okay, I can um, do it one more time. Okay. So, so let's let's do this way. Uh, uh, I, th I think many people got how to connect to that mobile system, uh, or at least I think, uh, and, and going into these folders, maybe that's where uh, there is confusion. So. Uh, uh, can Dr. Powdell, can you show on the terminal? Because I, it seems like I, we have some uh, Mac users and the Linux users. 
who wants to see how to do it in the terminal. Uh, so uh, while you are showing that, maybe uh, and and you can show that, and we can go come back to this windows again. Dr. Prajul. Okay, I'll type the first command here. So the command I have typed that is for the Mac user. Uh, and, and we have to send this. Uh, so we, we don't have to uh, make this uh, uh, mm, uh, this one. I think we can, uh, oh yeah, that, that's also, that will also work if they have Mac, but if they don't, they don't have Mac, I don't think they can install parties. So what we can do is we can send them the PEM file you created, mm -hmm. that he.pem. Uh, and that will work. So, uh, uh, so uh, hang on here. So what we'll do is, uh, Doctor uh, Parajul is going with uh, the process, and just uh, and we'll send you that key.pem file and follow that with, with that process with that key.pem file because the PPK file is not going to work for the uh, Mac and Linux users. Okay. So I have to send the file. Yes. Uh, I I I. I, I uh, can you please send it, send it to me so that I can send it to the other people uh, because I have the email addresses here. Uh, and while we are doing that, maybe we can go back to the move storm again, uh, either way, uh, either uh, this way or that way. Mm -hmm. Let me forward information. All right, I will start sharing. So I will do move storm one more time. Okay, so uh, can you see my screen? Okay, perfect. Okay, I will uh, go ahead with uh, Mobile Action one more time. So open Mobile Action. Once you have, uh, you should have uh, something similar interface. So each of these here, this will show you your recent connection. Once you have it, I can. Actually, just click this and get automatically connected. But this time, I'm going to do it again as a new user. So go to session right here that says start a new remote session. Right? The first one on the top left. Click it. And then on the top left again, it will say a secure session. So you are going to start the SSH. And here, this is uh, the main critical part where you want to put the remote host name, your username, as well as the uh, the PPK file that contains all the keys. So go to advanced settings right here and click on use private key. So now the, this is there is a check mark right in front of use private key. You then go ahead to hey, look for the. PM And you can go ahead and look for the uh, PPK file that you just downloaded. So afunafa.ppk. So this is the file that I sent an uh, email to everybody. So just click open. Okay. So now the uh, private key is already here. Now there are only two more things that you need to specify. One is the remote host and the other is the username. So the remote host for, for this session is It is 104.154.53.116. I'm going to put this on the chat box as well. So if uh, somebody wants to follow that. So 104.154.53.116. And you hit on specify username so that there you will see a tick mark right there. And uh, delete the default that is up here. Replace this with AFU. Okay, so all the things that you need to have in this are, you need to have a username right here. You need to click so that a tick mark shows on a specified username. The remote host needs to be enabled. And then you have a private key, a tick mark at private key, where you can, uh, you go and click on the, the file that you downloaded from, from my email. That was titled afunapa.ppk. 
Okay. Once you do that, you hit okay, and it should let you automatically log in into the system. So uh, when you are doing it for the first time, it is going to ask for a passphrase. So at that point, just type NAPA, NAPA, which is the passphrase for, for this session. So uh, I just recently connected, so it lets me in automatically. Once you are here, you can type LS. To see, see, I can see a lot more people have already created their folders. So what I want you to do is I want you to make a directory in your name. So right now I'm doing a mine, but you, you will be doing this with your first name and last name and last five digits of your phone number. Okay, this way you will create a new directory. And if I do LS, I will see a new directory that I just created. It is right here. And like inside this directory is where everybody will be working. So you'll be working inside your own directory. So I want you to change directory using CD and then go inside your directory. So right now I'm going into the directory that I just created using CD. So this is my directory. And if I do LS, I don't have any files there. So it's so empty. And if I take a look at PWD, that shows the present working directory, it will show that I'm in data, users, and this is the my username, or this is the directory name that I gave. So, so yours should be in data, users, and your first name, last name, with the five last five digits of your phone number. And that is all. So we will start copying files to your uh, folder and then uh, move ahead with all the other analyses. So that, that's all for mobile external. You should all be able to connect uh, at least up to this point. Okay. okay. Uh, I have the same. The, when I speak, I see here the echo. Uh, is it? No, I think you're fine. Okay. 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 I'm still hearing some echo. It, it's, it might be me. I have to figure that something out. Uh, so I, I have already sent uh, the the key dot pem file. So now Dr. Prajuli will go ahead and uh, show how uh, it works with the Linux and the uh, uh, Mac. Okay, let me share the screen. So first open terminal, then I, and you have to copy the two files in the present location where you are working. First, do this step. So first see which in which directory you are, then copy those two files in this location. This is the first step. Yeah, uh, so Dr. Prajani, mm -hmm. can you please, uh, is there a way okay. to zoom in, uh, zoom the window? So do you have to show how to copy? Uh, uh, yes, please. <laughs> sure. Yeah, so let's do it. Okay. Yeah. I, I'll show the quick way. Yeah. So I'm in the folder user and sorrows. So if you do PWD and see the folder you, you are working with, then you can go to the file and you can just copy and paste in the folder you are working. Like you can copy this to here right? or you can change the location. I don't know if there is some comment, then I can. OK. 
So where is the chat room so that I can copy the file? Okay. So we'll use this command SS SSH dash I and use the name of the key file and use AFU at the rate the IP address that has been provided. So use this command. Let me zoom in. There is a question from T N Busal. Where will be the working directory to create in C or other? Uh, so it depends on whether you are in. Uh, so it, when you are talking about C, I I think then you are in Windows. Uh, and 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 in Windows, we are not going to make any. Uh, working directory here so we are just going to use the uh, working directory in that data in the in the linux uh, server uh, so after you copy those two files you have to just use this command and it will ask for the key and the key is the same now right? then it will automatically connect and you can see the all the files here And I can see some comments saying that the session is stopped. So if you have moved away from the screen for a little bit long time, it will stop. So just uh, log in and it should be there. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, can, you print, uh, can you please uh, type that command here? Uh, paste in can the Zoom. Command is there, but it is only for Linux or Mac, okay? So for I think Apple, I think, yeah. Windows, don't worry about that. So I'm actually copying the command. Yeah, this is the this command is that you have to use. But remember, the first step is to copy those files in the location where you are working. Uh, it, it, there's a question that is it possible to log in through Sigwin? Yes, so with Sigwin you do the exact same thing. Uh, but from Sigwin, I think it can also use the PEM file if you don't need the PPK. So uh, try to use the exact command that Dr. Prajul just showed. And if you have any trouble, just write your message, then we, we can address the problem. So we'll, we'll give it a try in like next five minutes and after 9.45, uh, if you have not logged in, uh, please always feel free to come back with uh, to us and ask questions and keep on trying, but we have to move on. So we'll move on with uh, you know, whoever we have here. So uh, we have to do that. So, so uh, maybe let's see, like, if you are not able to log in, then, then you can type the message here. Can some of the Mac or uh, Linux users confirm that they? Yeah. Uh, it was working. I know. I know it was working for many Windows users. I get a warning of unprotected private key file in Linux. Uh, th that would be fine. Don't worry about that. It is. It it, it has the that pass phrase in our pass, so don't worry. So Prasant has not got the .pdm file. Uh, Prasant, can you please uh, send your email again?
Dr. you should be able to send the part in the chat as well. Did you say something? It's showing command not found. So I'm not sure what, uh, what, what, what. So for every question, uh, let's uh, do it this way. Uh, write either Windows, in the, in the very in the beginning, write either Windows or Mac or Linux so that we know what we are getting. Yeah, I see that authenticity of host from Manu. Yes, uh, do yes. That's how you know you have to say yes, it is a host I know. And that's, and now if it is says yes, then that will work. We know, so. Okay, so uh, it seems like, uh, okay, so we have not shown one step that um, you can do a CS mode 400 for that key.pm file. Uh, can you please show that, Dr. Prajli? If, if it's if session it's ended, it's because uh, we are not using it. So just keep on, you know, just entering, keep on uh, connecting. So it, it, it's, it's the safety, uh, for, it's for the safety purpose that it automatically discards that for a while. I think 400 would be the right permission. Uh, yep. Can you zoom in a little bit? So after you copy the uh, copy the file uh, in whatever location, go to that location and do that CS mode 400 key.pm so that it has that right permission. Uh, from Salina, do we have to type a command in recently created directory? Yes, that's where you would be writing all those different things. All the commands uh, will be showing today and all the commands uh, Mr. Subedi showed you yesterday. Uh, Manisha, uh, potty is not needed if you have mobile extrem. So mobile extrem can work, uh, replace the potty. So from Sankar authenticating with public key AFU, password for AFU. So after that passphrase for AFU, you should say NAPA and then enter. And you will not see NAPA. So you just have to type in APA without seeing it. Yeah, that's perfect. Saroj, you are in mute. So I will repeat one more time. So first, what you need to do is copy those two files in the directory you are working with. Otherwise, it's not going to work. So first, copy those files and make sure you are in the same directory. Then some some of you may need to change the permission. So maybe use this command, chmod400key.pm. And after you do this one, you have to just use one command. I can copy and paste in the chat room. So you use this command, and after you enter this command, it will ask for the key. Uh, from Amrit Sharma, do we need to uh, down? Uh, is that download or that I'm um, DWN key.pm? Yes, you have to download and put it in the working directory. In the working directory. So, for example, in this example, I think uh, you are in users slash sorrows. I guess uh, can I use the PWD? command on your working directory. Okay. 
uh, PW. Okay, so, okay, so the, the, the probability is in user slash sorrow. So, so uh, go to your Mac or Linux, find that folder and put your .pem files over there. You don't need to copy the uh, PEM. What to do after writing APA is pass press. Just enter and you should see uh, 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 Dr. Project will show it again. You will see a dollar sign. You will see uh, bio very in the beginning. You will see bio and then you will see uh, users and the dollar, dollar sign. So first see where you are and copy that file in the same location where your present directory is. And after that, you have to use a single command. And if it doesn't work, maybe for some of you, you have to use, you have to change the permission. So if you need, maybe change, use this command to change the permission. But maybe like for me, it was not required. So you can change the permission first. And after changing, changing the permission, just use this command. So this is in the chat box. And after you use this command, you should be able to connect. And it will ask for the passphrase. You can type, but it will not show you typing. NAPA NAPA. So it should automatically connect you. So you are in the right place here. And you can do ls to see what are there. Like all, of, like so many people have made their own directory, and you should be able to make your own by using mk dir space your name and last for five digit of your phone number. Uh, we have at least around sixty six people already making folders. Okay, half of the population, I guess. Okay, so uh, uh, if, if it is not working for you, we are sorry. Uh, you you'll get it. I, I know by the end of the session or after the session, please connect with us. Uh, you'll get it done. So uh, don't worry about that. So uh, if it is working for somebody like you in like half of the people, it will work for you. So don't worry. Uh, so give it a try. Okay. Yes. If it, if it is not working for you, just like type in the chat room. Then we should be able to help you through the chat room also. Yeah. So, uh, and, and uh, while I'm talking, uh, you know, uh, look at the uh, chat box uh, in, and um, everybody will be helping. So, okay. So let's move to the uh, next one. So uh, what, what we'll do here is I'll go through how to work. So I'll start sharing my screen. So I wanted to start with, so let's, let's, let me say what's the purpose of the whole, uh, can everybody, can you please meet everybody? Okay. Okay. You are muted. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> so, so now let's think about what is our purpose here. Uh, what we are trying to do is download a reference genome of coronavirus, download some other genomes, including Nepal's, and then start looking at what is the data quality and map it, align it back to the reference genome. And then if there are any variants, then call the variants and see what is the difference between the original uh, coronavirus, or not the original, it's still the global coronavirus, SARS-CoV-2 virus versus Nepal or some recent one in, from India or others. So right now, if you open the NCBI website, right on the top, you see all these COVID is emerging situations, something, something, and you see a lot of different things. In the last one, you will see find NCBI, SARS, COV2, literature, sequence, clinical content, and all those things. And then if you look at this, this page, you will see, okay, what are the different publications? And you will also see what, is, what are the different annotations, uh, uh, 
and there is a sequence and also you can see everything in uh, display or you can also blast the database where you have different data and you can also download different data sets uh, from the SRA so now let's, let's think about let's go to the SRA so what SRA is the sort read archive that is what that Illumina most of the Illumina sequences are before going there now let me open so if you look at this uh, reference genome so this is our reference genome so if you cl click here this is that reference genome and again we can just click FASTA here and you can download this FASTA file so to to make things easier I have already downloaded the FASTA file you can always do a send to and file and then there's a faster file and if you create file that sequence file will be downloaded here and you can always copy that file okay so that is one way to download this file and uh, dr Paulin will also uh, uh, type you a comment from wget how, how you can download this uh, sequence file So, so then uh, we have this annotation that is the GFF file file type we talked about yesterday. That is the GFF file. You can also download this, and we can talk about that later. We'll go with that later. Then what we are interested in now is on the SRNs. So we want to look at the sorted archives. So if you look at here, uh, it, now this is the extent of the project showed yesterday, and he sourced in some gene id and also some organism right now what we are so this tax tax id 2697049 is this novel coronavirus so when you just copy this one uh, and just source for this one in sra we are going to see so many different uh, sequences here so if you look at the look at here you have more than 27664 samples here what i'm going to do one extra here is i'll type Nepal here and enter so if you look at this one you, you can see SRX something something and it will talk about okay uh, we have this SRA uh, raw reads and something uh, complete genome of SARS-CoV-2 from Nepal and it has this RON ID so this is called that short read ID so if you look at this ID now copy this ID and Go to and uh, let me put that in the chat window uh, so that you can also follow me. Hmm. When I'm sharing this, it seems like uh, that uh, I cannot see the chat window. Uh, can somebody copy this one, uh, please? And uh, this is SRR one 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 seven seven nine two. Okay, so we'll go here, and, and this is exactly what you, what you have already seen earlier with uh, So if you do, I always start with PWD and because this PWD, it will show you where you are Then there is data slash users and like Dr. Portal said, I'll make a directory on my name And I'll go to that directory and if I do ls, there is nothing now. So there is a command called fastq dash dump and then do double hyphen split files and paste that uh, SRR number. The SRA tool installation has not been configured. Okay, so uh, let me see what happened there. Let me try here. Uh, and and that, is, that is the life of the biomedicine. Most of the time, rather than working on real thing, you will be fixing what's, the, what's wrong with the program. So, so seems like what happened is, and, uh, the username we are providing to you is not configured for that one. So we, I, because I tried in a different account, that is the way it is working. So 
uh, while it is downloading, let me try to fix it in the in, in your account. So. Hmm. This is totally new. Uh, let's do this. Uh, we, we will fix that later. Let's not uh, worry about that now. So what I'll, I'll uh, show you is uh, some go to the some other files and then uh, I have already downloaded that 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 file so I'll show you what we will do after downloading the file so uh, maybe uh, while I'm showing this one maybe uh, my collaborators can try to fix that let's see what's going on if we can fix this that's great if not we'll fix it sometime later Try okay, seems like Dr. Paul fixed it. So, seems like this is now working. So, everybody should be able to see that now. So, because it is a huge data set, it will take some time. Uh, to to get it downloaded. So what we have done is we have already downloaded the data. We have already prepared everything so that we can show, uh, you know, how how it will look like and all those things. So let's go back to uh, our folder. After you have. Uh, downloaded you will see these files like this one it will have srr1177792 underscore one dot past q and it will also have srr1177792 dot past q so remember what dr paul said yesterday about the file formats now all the file formats we are talking about, most of them are still readable by text. If you open a text file, they, you can re easily open that. And the way we open the text files in Linux is we just look at the beginning, like the head command, or we do a cat, which is for every everything, or we do less or more command. With that command, it works. So let's try the less command here and Let's see that one of the file here. Okay, so now, now if you look at this file, uh, now remember what Dr. Powell said yesterday. What is this file format? Fast queue, right? So uh, in the beginning, you will see at the rate, and then you will see the information about this file. So this is uh, from the this sample and the length of this uh, um, particular run uh, read is 152. This read is, the second line is also read here. So because my window is smaller, that looks like it went to the second line, but in reality, it is still the first line. And then you will see uh, another plus sign and something. So most of the time it, it can be just plus or sometimes it can be plus and exact same thing uh, on the top. And the fourth line here will have all these different, uh, you know, something gibberish kind of looking things, but they are actually different quality data so it will it will be from different letters and digits there i mean either it is one two three four or 40 up to 40 so this is actually just the um, data uh, just the quality if you look at all these codes they will always be a t c or g in some cases in very rare, rare some rare cases it can be n because sometimes the software cannot tell what the uh, base is and it will tell it will give you as a n so what we do next is okay i see uh, somebody raised hand are there any questions in the chat
and when I when we do a list and then uh, going back to the command, I'm just uh, clicking on the key Q. So and that will get back from this one. So you type something and then just click Q and then you will see always see this dollar sign. Is there any question, Dr. Paul? In chat? Uh, I think it says on recognize option is split file. Should we split files with the S? Oh, okay. Okay. Yep. Yeah, there, there is split files. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. Now, now, uh, we, now we are going to look at the quality of this sequence. So the way we look at the quality is we have passed QC and then you give that read read whatever that read is underscore one dot FSTQ and then enter. So when you start doing this one, you will start, it will, it will uh, start working on this file. And, and after it is finished, what you are going to see is one beautiful thing about this uh, mobile Extrum, other than Potty, I used to use Potty a lot. Uh, and and uh, thanks to Dr. Powell, he sold me uh, mobile Extrum, which uh, uh, is actually better than that one. So if you look at the, uh, on the top left here, you will see data slash raw data. So you will see this, this folder here. So now if you run your code, and, and then you see any zip files over there, anything going on, then you can actually go in this one, you can type, for example, data, uh, users, uh, and your name, right, as your, your folder, and then you are going to see what they are. But this one is not in my folder, so I'll go back to where these, these are. So this is again in data. raw data and if you look at here you will see some html files and so now now we can clearly see that is that uh, many people are probably downloading the data or something is happening because it doesn't it doesn't generally take this long time so it is taking so much time that means the processor is working uh, so much so uh, seems like a lot of you are working on so that's really great so now you will see the the uh, st so the, the exact same name you had earlier, and then you are going to see the pastqc.html file. So open that file with your browser. If you just double click it, it will uh, be opened by a text editor. So open with the default program. So that should be opened by your uh, some browser, either Chrome or um, Windows, uh, Internet Explorer or some other browser. Now you can look at this one and it will say the pastqc. Now it is going to talk. Uh, so because I'm still running the one, I actually am looking at two so that I can show you the, you know, the things here. You can see there are total of 5.2 uh, million sequences here. If you look at the sequence length, they are from 35 to 301. The percent GC content is about 30, 38%. Then you will see this quality uh, per sequence base quality here. Uh, so, so if you look at this quality, uh, as I was talking about earlier, the quality goes from zero to 40 and anything more than 30, we generally say that's a good quality data. So if you look at the quality here and, and the, the X axis are different bases. So a length of the base, so first, second and up to 300, uh, that's what we had here. So if you look at the quality of data up to 200, maybe 50 it's always above 30 uh, and if you look at the actually the uh, mini score that is that's a red line this red line is above 30 even for 290th or 295th base pair so it's a really high quality data and and, and this is a, this is typical you if you see something like this kind of box plus in the beginning that means something is going on uh, something is bad but if you see this kind of things towards the end, that's okay. Then this is uh, the quality scores, uh, mean quality scores, and that's exactly similar thing we, we were seeing earlier, right? So, and then it will see show you the 
for the power base what do we see in the, the gc content most of the time this is how this uh, uh, one is going to look like so if you look at this, this different color uh, green and red should always be almost equal because they are a and t and so generally because it is random sometimes it is in one strand sometimes in the other strand uh, so it, it we could have sequence from any strand so the, most of the time a and t are always equal c and g are always equal so and that is what you will see here <coughs> if you look at the first few bases you are seeing some zigzag that means there might be two things going on one is we might have some adapter or mids uh, that some fixed sequences uh, that is represented in a higher number or it also means that uh, the searing we did and if you, if you remember uh, how we sequence uh, sequence and the, these different sequence uh, in uh, Dr. Sangit uh, Lanchana's talk, he was talking about uh, the blender and that shotgun sequencing. So it's kind of random sharing in the physical sharing. But right now we also do uh, enzymatic sharing. So if we do the enzyme sharing, sometimes it might be biased for some sequences. And that's why sometimes you might see some uh, higher number of uh, sequences in the very beginning. So it's just in watch out. Uh, but it's not nothing uh, most to worry about because the sequence quality after this eight nine base pairs is really good and the content is looks really good if you look at the gc content that is how generally it should look like uh, uh, what is the theoretical distribution and what is the real distribution you will always see that normal curve if you look at the power base n content you don't see a lot except for some and very towards the end and this is very common uh, based on what is the sequencer used and this is the sequence length you have already seen uh, there are some sequences with very short sequences but some are very high sequences so what generally in the sequencing world we always sequence to a length maybe 300 base pairs in this example uh, but it this looks like maybe it was already uh, trimmed with the adapt trimmed for any ad illuminate adapters or other adapters and that is why some of the sequences might actually look smaller uh, if you look at the duplication, this is really highly duplicated because you see um, there are a lot of sequences, more than 100 uh, or 500 copies. Uh, so it has that duplication of the sequences. And if you look at the percent of sequence remain, remaining after we don't uh, duplicate, it will be just 14%. What this means is, this is just a 29,000 base pair uh, genome, but we have sequences in such a depth that uh, we have the same sequence showing up again and again. Uh, if you look at the open represented sequence, that's good. We don't have anything here. If you look at the adapter content, as I said already, seems like it was already trimmed for the adapters. So you won't see anything here. So uh, many of the times, if it was not trimmed for the sequences, you will see some of the Illumina adapters or any other adapters. So depending upon what is the uh, sequencing criteria. So this is how you generally look at the quality of, the, um, of any fast file. Okay, so I'll take some questions if uh, there are any questions. Uh, Dr. Paul, can you please moderate if there are any questions? So, it looks like this is the, I got this error and again this error is something nothing very new it is it is saying that can't create a cast file uh, most likely this is because uh, so many users are you uh, are in this system and this is uh, we when we uh, made this server we made enough for maybe 10 or 20 people and so many people are working so we may not have uh, enough uh, space here uh, so uh, if you look at the no space left so everybody is working on the temp, temp device so that might be the reason it is, it is that way again sorry for that so you know you know that is something that if you again try so we'll keep it open for a few days uh, so if you try it uh, sometimes maybe not during the session I, I think it is going to work Okay, so now we, we now we uh, have looked at the sequence and now we are happy with the sequencing. So what is our next step is we are going to 
look at look at the reference genome so now let's say uh, i showed you the uh, reference genome earlier so now let me show you what that reference genome looks like and if you look at this reference genome this is that nc underscore uh, something something past a file so that was our um, past a file so if you look at that file again if you look at the one exact you can remember the file format we talked about yesterday it starts with the greater than sign and nc uh, and this all this different kind and sars cov2 isolate wuhan hu one so this is that first complete genome and then you are going to see all this atcg and everything so this is that 29000 base pairs so uh, because it doesn't have any chromosomes or anything that is why it's a single sequence okay so now we have the reference genome and now we also have the uh, uh past file we want to map i want to show you one thing interesting on the past file uh, is if you look at any of these past files you will see underscore one and underscore two what that means is the paired end se sequencing so go go back and google what the paired end sequencing are this is generally after we do use that blender uh, for that searing and that is, let's say that will be 500 or 500 base pairs. So for a DNA fragment of 500 base pairs, we are going to sequence from the beginning and also from the end, but on the reverse stem. Again, it always have to be that five prime to three prime. So um, from the beginning and also from the end. So what paired in that means is, okay, these two reads are actually coming from the same, DNA fragment, but they are coming from maybe 500, 300, 400, or so many base pairs different. So that's what uh, those paired ends are. Now we are going to map and, and uh, or assemble, uh, we are going to map this to the reference genome. And the mapping, the, the code for mapping is BWA, MEM, and then you give the reference genome, then you give one of your uh, past queue file and the, also the paired in file for the same file and then uh, remember what uh, uh, mr subedi said yesterday you use arrow and when you use arrow that means whatever is the output of this program write that output to the another file so what i'm going to write there is I'm going to write the same as RR number dot SAM and remember what the SAM format is from yesterday's talk. Okay. So now I'm going to run this one. So now this is uh, showing, you know, uh, this is now, this is what it is doing. It, it is now mapping your, our reads. So it will take a while. And again, uh, so it seems like this is done very quickly. So uh, we, it didn't take a long time because it was a smaller genome and, and, that is the beauty of working with the virus. Uh, think about working with the human or crop or animals. It will take so long time and we have to use a parallel pro parallel processors. Here we are just using one processor. We generally use uh, more than 100 proce processors at a time so that we can map. So now let's look at that SAM file we just created. So, Okay, so our SAM file was uh, this one. And, and I remember I was showing 11177 something from the uh, from Nepal sequence earlier. Now I am showing the other sequence. Uh, it, so uh, because I saw that one and this is also probably from Bangladesh or India that I already downloaded. But because I also have that uh, Nepal sequence, I'm going to show you that one. Okay, now look at this one. So again, uh, uh, you are wondering why we are showing so many file formats in a single day, uh, why we wanted to show you that, uh, and this is the reason. So uh, if you look at this one, now this is the SAM format. This is that mapped, uh, that's, this is this alignment file. And if you look at this header that we talked about yesterday, there will be this SQ header, right? And then this is the, what was the code for the, so these two lines 
uh, are uh, basically the headers. And if you look at the next one, you will see this is the sequence name. Uh, we have 92.1, 2, uh, 3, and so on. You are going to see that. And for the dot one, we have two different reads. Uh, you are going to see two different reads here. And then you are going to see, so uh, we, we, will go, we will talk about what this 99 or 147 means later. These are actually different flags on, on uh, what it means. Um, uh, it means like whether it is mapped in the uh, forward strand in, in the, or it was mapped in the reverse strand, whether it was mapped, um, uh, it, um, what are the other things, whether the pair was mapped or pair was not mapped and those, those are a lot of other things. So uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later while you guys are practicing. And then this is the reference genome. So in this case, here we are going to see this reference genome. And sometimes uh, if it was a it was human or crop genome and your reference genome had chromosome one, two, three, four, it will show that chromosome one, two, three, four and those kind of things. And this is this number here is where it mapped to in the, in that uh, reference genome. So we said it is a bit, it is about twenty nine thousand or twenty uh, about thirty thousand base pair genome. So this particular sequence, this TTA something something, actually mapped to twenty four thousand nine hundred seventy three base pair uh, towards the end. This sixty is quality. This hundred fifty two M. This is called cigar string, and this is something that uh, you know you guys might want to look later. Uh, what cigar string is? It is basically um, how many matched, uh, and M is match, I is insertion, uh, and so on. Uh, we, we 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 can look at that uh, sometime later, and or or we actually encourage you to uh, kind of explore that. When you see this equal sign, that means the paired and the read two also map to the same genome, uh, same chromosome, uh, we generally say, or same contig, that's how the other way to say. Uh, and then it mapped to the same location, looks like 24973. And then again, the quad, and, and this 152 is actually the difference between the mapping of uh, this uh, beginning and end. So it looks like, because the, the, it was just the 152 base pairs, it has the exact same uh, for both sides. So that is why you will see the difference is here 152, here you will see minus 152, here you will see 213, here you are going to see minus 213. And, and that is because uh, th that's where it mapped. And that is that uh, fragment length I was talking about earlier, whether it was a 500 base pairs or 700 or 200, looks like it was 152 in this case, this was 213 in this case, and so on. So this is how the uh, SAM file looks like. So I'm also now next uh, going to, because we generally, for the SAM file, because if you look at, let's say, uh, LS, dash l and let's do this srr this and star and this this star means uh, give list all the files that starts with this name so if you look at this one you will see we have this ASCII file this html file that zip file is for the uh, quality you have the past queue uh, everything for the second read then you have the sam file and then you also have the bam file and remember again what Dr. Uh, Porter talked about, SAM file and BAM file are, both are actually MAP files, but the BAM files are the prime, uh, binary files and they are zipped. So that is why the size is so small. So because this size looks small, generally we almost never save anything on SAM. We generally convert it to the BAM file. So the way to convert that file is again, SAM tools, view, and there are so many commands, so many different parameters here in the command. And that is, again, this is the practice and this is where you are going to look into uh, manual. So you do a hyphen S, that means we are reading a SAM file. And then you are going to do a hyphen B, that means we are going to write in a BAM file. And then you are going to write 
give that same same file name and again you are going to give that arrow and then you are going to say okay this is a bam file so this is how it will uh, convert that sam file to the bam file okay so i and always if you are doing something and it takes time use use a control c then that will that is going to stop the command so now we can look at this bam file so now if we do this less and uh, do you are going to, you don't see anything here i'm not sure maybe nothing was written let's do that with this sorted.bam file because we know we have that sorted.bam file if you do less in that bam file it says this is maybe a binary file see it anyway so looks like a binary file it finds out and i want to say okay yeah let's see anyway but this is what you are going to see nothing so only computer understands that so now what you do is you actually do a sam tools view and do that bam file and if you do this samples view what is it is going to do is it is going to write so everything that is not something i want to show and yesterday if um, i think mr Subedi showed that but if he did not uh, there is something called pipe and this pipe is just that straight line and if you do less there then after the pipe then that is exactly like the doing the less command for the output so if you look at this one now this is exactly what it looks like from the earlier so what is the difference between this one and the earlier one if you look at here i in the first line there was 29 something something right uh, but now you see one five six seven 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 so that means it is actually sorted so that is why i have that uh, name as a sorted dot band okay and that is why the in the name in the beginning now are not no more dot one or dot two or dot three so now we are not sorting by the name we are actually sorting by where it actually maps okay so and again and again the command for sort and you can if command for sorting the uh, file is sam tools sort and then you can just write that arrow and again that sorted and hopefully the, the the beginning word is you are not going to you are going to use that file that was not sorted okay i know i'm going a little bit quick but again we'll revise that uh, so i'll pause it for a while i'll give you a chance to work on your data uh, so let's uh, if you if you have not downloaded data i'll show you another way to how you can get that data uh, and remember uh, the cp command that dr uh subedi cc showed yesterday so if you look at that one you can do cp if you don't have you, ha you have not downloaded data from the uh, fast queue dump you can do cp and then you can do slash data slash raw data slash srr you will need to go to two directories back because they will be inside their own directories. You are saying something to me, sir? Me? Or? Yeah, they are in their own directory. So they need oh, to. okay. But even if they are their own directory, if you start with this slash in the beginning, uh, because I'm starting from the root, it should not be a problem. Underscore one dot past queue and if you do dot that is going to copy in your folder okay so that is the command okay now i'll uh, stop here for a while so that i can hear questions from you uh, and i can uh, look at the questions and i can answer anything over there Would you repeat steps on looking past QC report? Uh, maybe we can do that. Error storage existed while writing file within system module. Uh, so that means uh, probably running the past QC because I think uh, 
let's me let me check the disk usage we should still have enough space in the users uh, so uh, that shouldn't be problem in the users uh, that that problem may be because of the temporary directory bad file descriptor error uh, i'm not sure where that is that error is coming from on which process so uh, a lot of these errors please let us know what is the command what is the system you are working with uh, is this the fast queue step or the bwmm step i'm not sure so uh, let us know again So uh, an error occurred during processing, uh, you know, a lot of the time that might be because of the uh, reason, uh, because th that might be because we have uh, so many users concurrently. So uh, try it again. Uh, from Sanjeev Sakota, can we use this for species identification? Um, so there is a common uh, joke or fact, something that uh, uh, biomedicine talks these days is, uh, a, a PI or a biologist may send you a sequence. Okay, this is a, uh, I got this sequence from rice. Can you please sequence this? And then we don't see any data. We just look at the sequence and we are going to tell them, huh, seems like you got uh, wheat, not rice. So, uh, you know, that's, you know, that's how powerful it is. Uh, looking at the blast, uh, you know, that is, that is generally what we do from the NCBI blast that, okay, we can generally tell what species it is coming from uh, we can when we do map to the whole genome then we are we are going to tell what it is but if we are just using a small sequence maybe we cannot the other one that in the species identification we do a lot is in the metagenomics uh, with the bacteria we sequence just the 16 years gene uh, and then uh, sequencing that gene then we can say okay in your soil sample or in your gut or anywhere in the in your environment we have this 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 species of bacteria because the 16 year sequence looks like that uh, how to exit a running command i think i told earlier just the control c or if you are in a, a mac command c uh, linux i am not sure hopefully the control c also works Uh, from Samir uh, Murbari, can you explain those paired sequences in sample? Are they complementary? So paired are not ne not necessarily complementary, but they can be complementary um, uh, because uh, uh, because you know if your fragment is less than 300 base pair and we have a sequence of 300 base pairs, then we are going to read one from the five five prime on the uh, forward strand and uh, another in the uh, reverse strand. Okay, so uh, I just want to test here. Uh, it's, it's not a test for uh, anything. I just want to see how many of you were able to get somewhere. Uh, so can you let me know in the chat box or I might have a cheat code to do that. So from this one, I can actually see, uh, if you look at here, I can actually see who has the first few files, who has what files in each of their directory. So, you know, it's not to, you know, see, who, uh, you know, what you got it done, but I'm just testing, you know, if somebody could do it. And, and if five or 10 of you could do it, uh, it's good that uh, we, we are at least partially successful.
so uh, the next step is I'm going to show you that SAM file again on some visualization. Uh, and before that, if you want to give it a little bit, we, 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 we have some time. So if you want to uh, try some more, uh, we can wait or we can also have Dr. Parajuli show on uh, uh, his side and that is a Mac uh, so that you know you can also compare what it looks like over there. Dr. Prajali? You want me to do? Uh, if, if you want to, <laughs> I think that should be the same thing, right? Just repeating the same thing. Yeah, exactly, exactly, repeating the same thing. Yeah, you know, just maybe they want to see a nicer terminal than Windows. And and and, and Dr. Powell and Mr. Swedi, do you want to add anything uh, here? You know, something. I have may have missed. I, you want me to explain more, or you can explain anything about the file types or all different things. so some some questions here uh, uh so please write the questions in the whole uh, to everyone so that uh, other collaborators can also answer uh, maybe i may not be able to answer all those uh, do we need to download the fasta file from ncbi or it works accordingly that's a great question so uh, i forgot to say that but yes please go ahead and either download or now uh, now because we have already downloaded use that copy command i had used earlier so maybe that is what probably dr Parajali is going to do because he he doesn't have that in uh, the file uh, in in his folder so he might be copying that the reference genome from that raw data i have uh, and use that as a reference genome so what uh, I, do i have to copy everything uh, no you don't so that is uh, there are two ways so you can either copy or you can also do the uh, refer refer to the same file is the we can do either way so generally the google practice is not to copy the reference genome is somewhere in your folder somewhere and everybody can use the same reference genome uh, so uh, you can in the beginning when i said bwa meme and then i gave that nc something something you can actually do slash data slash raw data and nc something uh, and that will also work so you don't have to have that in your folder So I can see the two file, but where is the reference? Yeah, the reference is not in probably in your folder. Your reference is in my. Uh, you have to go to the data slash uh, users, uh, data slash raw data. You can stop that. So, so now that process is running. Probably you can stop that process. You showed how it looks like and start working on the next step. Zoom in a little bit more. Uh, could you please briefly elaborate differences in visualizing and analyzing through mobile extreme task cell and rapid? Um, I can explain that too, but I'll let Dr. Powell explain that because he is the expert in task cell and rapid and those kind of things. So, uh, 
mobile app store is just uh, an interface where it lets you connect your your laptop to a cloud reader or any other supercomputer. So it is something different. And Tassel and I think you probably mean Big by that. Tassel and Gapy are softwares that are used to do some population genetics and GUI association studies. So Tesla and Gapit are more related to each other than Mobile X. So what is the location for the reference line? Should be slash data in front of the data slash. There's a, a question on the chat. I'll just uh, answer to that from Suman Dungel. What is the advantage of doing mapping than that of alignment from any other alignment tool? So in general, these are two different approaches. You do mapping with a long reference genome. You map your sort rates to a longer reference genome, but while for your alignment, you can align like two, uh, two, two similar rates together. So these would be a different approaches to it. And they have a slightly different uh, Go. It's taking longer to map now. I think I might have used a different file, right? Maybe it's a bigger file. So from Manu, I don't know why, but I am, am getting this problem again and again. Failed to process this, this, this underscore past you. Is that in the uh, past QC or that is uh, BWMM, which command is that? It will help us. Uh, 
okay past qc so uh, i think one of the problem in the past qc i'm i'm seeing is uh, it uses the java environment and sometimes with the memory uh, in the temporary and, and it has a temporary memory in the temporary uh, slash tmp and if it is full uh, then the java cannot work so that might be the reason uh, and and it might be that you have to try it again and also if your uh, fast file is not complete then it will if it is truncated then it will also show an error yep that's that's a great point yep so the step will be the same like before you use sam tools do view dash capital s dash b that is the bam file then you give the file name that you have used before that is the sam file and output will be the bam file should I run it? Or? Uh, no, don't, don't, you don't have to. Okay. Okay, so there is a question. Uh, what should I do? Can I just download fast file and paste it? So that's the difference. Uh, you can download it and that is the downloading are different ways. And that past your dump is one of the uh, downloading way. Uh, if it is a past file from the NCBI, you can use the past file and use that um, the mobile XTRM to just copy your file there and it will also be in your folder. That is another way to download the reference file. Uh, you can also use the wget command. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, it is somewhere you can see that, that wget command uh, and also do it. And the other thing is, as always, uh, if you are working with something with today in our file, you can always copy from this raw data folder because we have all the reference genome here, all the uh, different uh, SAM files, BAM files, everything here. And there is one more question from Suman Dunyo. He says, uh, unrecognized option that's that slip file. So one of the things that you should be very uh, careful when running bioinformatics is uh, if there are sudden like uh, tiny, small, simple mistakes, like you forget to put a dash somewhere or you, you miss a space bar somewhere, then it will not work because it is a computer and it, it will only give you what you are told. So in fast view dump, when you specify split files, there is a dash in between split and file. So make sure you are putting that in here. So there is a question. Could you please repeat once why two fast view files were found? So uh, that is something that we can go back to the sequencing, Illumina sequencing strategy and how it works. Uh, so I was hoping to show you uh, the visualization in IGV and uh, it looks like I, I got into the same problem. We have so many users and the uh, limited memory and I could not open the IGV in my uh, uh, in the site now. Uh, if somebody has IGV in their local computer, maybe we can open it. And yeah, I can try in my computer. I don't know if I can open it. Okay. I have IGV. Okay. Let me try, but I cannot get into it. <laughs> okay, that's that's it. Okay, thanks. Uh, so, um, again, going back to that question, two past two files, it is called the paired end. So, when we have the, we, we fragment the DNA, uh, you, you still have that double standard DNA, but, uh, and, and it will actually, you know, if you look at the, some, you, you YouTube video in the Illumina, you will see that those two strands were going to be separated and will be attached to the flow cell and then it will start uh, making the copy or replicate it and then it will again go to attach into the other flow cell and, do, and, and so, 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 so much and so much. So when, when you have those kind of things, then uh, in, we have multiple ways to sequence. You can either sequence just from one end and finish it or you can also do sequence from both ends of that fragment. So if you sequence from both ends, what is going to happen is you have the same ex exact DNA fragment, but the sequence you are getting one from the lightest, if you remember Dr. Parajuli's uh, well, visualization yesterday and he was explaining uh, what is a, a positive strand and the negative strand or a forward and the reverse strand and five prime and three prime. So one is going from the five prime on the positive strand and the other read two is going from, from five prime of the negative strand. And we get about like whatever our depth is 100 base pairs or 200 base pairs, we are going to get the sequence from that. Yeah, so 
uh, we, we can actually visualize that one and see that. So, uh, Dr. Uh, Prajali is showing that. So I, I'm still trying to open the IGV. So. Okay, maybe I can share the screen about the uh, IGV, uh, what to expect in the IGV and what that means maybe is from the sequencing one and more one more time and explain that. Uh, Dr. Portal or Mr. Subedi, do you want to, if you want to add anything, please. Uh, so while we are waiting for uh, Dr. Parajuli to uh, open the IGB or I am waiting uh, to get my IGB open, uh, we have a guest here uh, and to introduce the guest, I want to invite Dr. Luitel, Dr. Himal Luitel to uh, invite our guest uh, for a uh, short introduction to the Biotech Society. Dr. Luitel. Oh, he is not. Okay, uh, now yes, yes. Okay. Uh, probably you, you need to uh, unmute uh, uh, Navin Munakarmi as well. Uh, he is the uh, president of uh, Biotech Society. Okay, uh, good morning, everybody. Now, I would like to introduce uh, Navin Munakarmi, uh, who is president of uh, Biotech Society Nepal BSN. Uh, he will update uh, some of the insights, uh, what they are doing and uh, how this uh, seminar of workshop uh, will help uh, in the professional arena. Uh, Navin? Yes, sir. Yeah, Namaste. Now, yeah, it's your time. Namaste. Thank you for the invitation. This is Navin Munankarmi, President of Biotechnology Society of Nepal, PSN. This is one and only Society of Biotechnology in Nepal. And I would like to thank uh, AFU College Center of Biotechnology and NAPA for organizing this uh, wonderful uh, conference on hands-on training regarding the bioinformatics. It is very much, much uh, it is very much exciting. As in the lockdown conditions, we are organizing through webinar-based activities um, regarding our BSN. Uh, we are non-government voluntary run society we are conducting uh, cultures of, of uh, programs seminars, Program seminars in nepal, nepal. Uh, actually we are advocating yeah, and working for establishment of biotechnology in nepal at the government level and we are representing at different level of governmental organizations like nepal academy of science and technology and currently in this corona crisis an ad hoc committee was formed at the Ministry of Education, Science and Technology, and we are representing from the biotechnology side. And in that uh, committee, we are also putting different uh, views of biotechnology, including the bioinformatics establishment, uh, as uh, biotechnology is also uh, in the very uh, naive conditions, people are understanding bioinformatics too. And regarding the bioinformatics, what we found uh, almost in every syllabus, even at the uh, normal pure science, like the zoology, microbiology, botany, there occurs in the course of uh, bioinformatics. Some has 50 marks and some have few marks. So in this way, by uh, importance of bioinformatics is growing day by day. And uh, recently also, uh, people are thinking what after diagnosis of COVID. Now, after finding the positive case, we are uh, we need to look after the solutions. And for this also, bioinformatics uh, plays a very crucial role. As uh, through the bioinformatics, we can work from the home. Uh, it uh, does not require the lab, and which has the very much high uh, through input regarding development of any immunomodular uh, modular activities and even at the vaccine development. And we are also putting these things 
and even asking and requesting NAS for uh, let's uh, give priority for the bioinformatics. And even at the uh, recently, uh, at the level of ministry, uh, Agriculture Research Committee, uh, no, sorry, uh, no, it's an Ayurved Research Committee was formed, which is headed by Professor Janardan Lamichane. Uh, in that also, we request him to input the bioinformatics. So to sort out the different uh, Nepal-specific high altitudinal medicinal plant, their molecules to make an uh, interaction with the corona and these things. And they are also saying uh, they will give the space. So these are the, some uh, activities regarding the uh, bioinformatics and uh, our information biotechnology society of Nepal. We are conducting, uh, we are the organization which uh, start the celebration of World DNA Day in Nepal, which occur on, uh, every April 25th. Um, as well as we are also doing the bio, uh, bio biotechnology advocacy, at which we are uh, we go to the different school and the colleges to advocate about the uh, cutting edge technology, biotechnology, and bioinformatics. Um, likewise, we are also members of international conferences, and I think uh, back, back, back we conducted the bioinformatics and some training with the Addison Company of India. Uh, I guess we are also doing lots of things. Uh, regarding this program, this is very much important. And I think uh, even at a governmental level, NARC, uh, I think uh, Resum Sir is also in this conference. NARC is also doing lots of um, activities. And people are nowadays thinking of mar marker assisted selection, molecular breeding. Um, and even I found some of the private organizations are doing Margaret assisted breeding and selection in the agriculture sectors. Uh, for this also bioinformatics plays a very much important role. And nowadays people are also interested for uh, production of GMOs and uh, their entry into the Nepal. And for this, I think uh, bioinformatics also play a great role. And regarding this uh, very informative uh, hands-on training, this will sure give our more insight to the Nepalese participant, which obviously uh, increase the importance of bioinformatics, especially in agriculture sectors and other sectors too. I hope uh, this uh, workshop or this uh, webinar-based workshop will uh, become a milestone for uh, Im for implementing importance of bioinformatics in the agriculture sectors and other sectors as a whole. We are always at the state of active state. We are already always ready for uh, promoting this cutting edge biological technology. Thank you. Namaste. Uh, thank you very much, Navin. Uh, now we'll continue our session. Dr. Ananda. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, it's, it's very nice to hear from you and it's very nice to see uh, what different biotech things going on in Nepal. And, and I'm really uh, encouraged by the word bioinformatics being used so much and, and not only being just as a word, but uh, everybody is thinking how to actually implement this one in Nepal's condition. And I totally agree that in this COVID-19 situation, we have this, we can work from home, we can work from beach, we can work in the middle of the island, like what I'm doing right, right now. You can see my background, there is, there is a sea, right? So you can do the bioinformatics from everywhere. So that's a great thing. Uh, I think uh, Dr. Prajuri is able to open the uh, IGB, but he doesn't have the BAM files. So let me share the BAM files with him so that uh, we can show you. Dr. Prasuli, those items should be there. Okay. So I, I think I'm getting a lot of this uh, 
question about this Java exceptions, especially during the past QC step. So we skip the past QC for now because uh, uh, seems like Java ran into that problem of not having enough space. And that is the exact reason that I was not able to run the IGB uh, because it depends on IG, uh, depends on that. So uh, please, uh, so forget about that step now. Uh, and we'll so where is the file? Uh, oh, it's in the Google Drive. In, in data? Uh, in the where it is now let me see okay maybe i upload in my drive Okay, I made it a uh, public uh, and I think you can uh, and I'm pasting the public link so you can directly download from here and everybody other people can also download if needed. Oops, I pasted somewhere else. So. We don't need dot ba file. Um, dot ba. Oh, I I, I just sent that one now. So that is the bam and by is here. Okay, seems like uh, yeah. Uh, so there is some answer from Ros uh, Rosan Sarma. So it looks like that Java problem. If you give the minus d option uh, and give the and, and you can did probably keep say, say data slash user slash your your folder your name. Uh, it should be able to solve that. That's the comment from uh, Roshan Sarma Powell. Hopefully that works. And, and that is the great thing about working in this collaboration everybody. So uh, we always learn something new. So while we are opening here, uh, I just want to talk about a little bit what's next. So tomorrow is our last session. So tomorrow what we're going to do is use these map files from these three different uh, uh, samples today. One is from Bangladesh, one is from India, and one is from Nepal. And we have already aligned. So we are going to look into the, so today we are going to look a little bit in the sequence here, but tomorrow we are going to look at them and say, okay, whether where we see any variants, what are the different variants and those kind of stuffs, uh, and, and make maybe able to make a, a multiple alignment with uh, 10 or so genomes and then uh, do some kind of tree that uh, uh, Mr. Subedi showed a few days ago. Okay, uh, Dr. Parajali. You can go ahead. I think you, you can explain much better. Sir. If you want to. Uh, it's up to you. I think I think you go ahead so that you can you know uh, look into different things. Uh, so uh, basically, the every every uh, uh, can you please right click and show as pair. Uh, right click on the any of the reds and there is something so as view as pairs. Yep. Uh, view as pairs. Yep. Oh, two steps up. Yep. Okay. Uh, and from is squeezed, it looks like it is squeezed. Can you right click again? 
on the reads down. Uh, it's expanded color. It's expanded. Okay, that's fine. Uh, so what you are seeing here is if you look at the look at look at top left, that is you see reference dot fast, eh? and then you see that reference. And uh, you are seeing that reference last 14,907 to 14,993. What that means is you are looking at that 20 out of that 29,000 base pair, base pair, you are looking at that 14,900 base pair uh, area. So that's where you are looking. And if you look very on the bottom, you will see that sequence and you will see TGC, TAACC. So that is the sequence you have. In the reference genome so that is your reference sequence on the very bottom now on the on the left side you see the srr something something uh, and dot coverage uh, on top and then you are going to see the sorted dot band the coverage yeah. if we have another band maybe we can show two at the same time also mm, uh, okay maybe uh, well i'm explaining maybe dr portal can download one of the files and send it to dr Prajali. Okay, so if, if you look at the top one, you will see that coverage. And, and I cannot see the numbers very clearly, but that looks like zero to 65,000 or 6,500, 8,500. Uh, can you uh, a little bit zoom there or? I'm not able to zoom. Okay, okay, that's fine. So uh, that is the coverage. So that is how many times in that same exact location we have the reads. And each that brown color or gray color, uh, fragments you are seeing there are your individual reads. So those are those all these uh, sequences you are seeing there. So can you zoom it down a little bit? Uh, make it okay. So let's let's look here now. So you see that that so it is kind of clipped, right? So you can see uh, some white space there that is they are not reads. Then it starts with some area and then it goes all the way to the next side and you, it will end with arrow. So that means that is the direction of the reads going there. In some cases, you are actually seeing the other way. You are seeing the arrow coming to the left side. That means it is actually reading in the reverse strand. Uh, so from the five prime to three prime in the reverse system, that is why you are going to see that arrow. In some cases, you are going to see that small squiggy line and it's small, very small, uh, uh, narrow, very thin line instead of that thick line. That thin line is just pairing up your read pair. So that means, okay, your pair, the read one is from uh, this base pair to that, that base pair and the other read is from another base pair. Uh, can we go to a genomic location close to, let's say, 23,000 somewhere in that area, 23,000? Okay, uh, can you look at this, this, this much zoomed? So now you can see very clearly those small uh, every box are those reads, you know, you, you, what, what you are seeing, those every box are reads. And you see those different colors, uh, green, blue, and red. Look at the default coloring uh, scheme of the uh, IGB. You can Google it and you will know uh, what those different colors are. Uh, most of the time they are, whether they are, uh, what is the quality of the reads or whether that is trimmed uh, to map and those kind of things. Something really interesting I would do, I think, uh, so is, uh, I, let's hold it here, let's hold it there. Uh, yep, right there, yeah, let's, okay. Uh, because I see some snip and I want to show that. So, uh, so if you look at these different colors there, uh, small, small lines, red or purple or green lines uh, in all those reads, that means that is actually different from the reference you know. And this is really interesting. It looks like we have so many differences, right? Sometimes the, the sequencer are not perfect because the sequencer also works with that uh, DNA replication with the PCR and there are always going to be some error. So when we, 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 in some, we uh, sometimes we see a lot of those errors and out of this, let's say this was in a depth of 5,000 and we see only one or two places we see instead of A, we see C, or instead of T, we see G. We kind of know that that may not be the true mutation. So that is why 
a lot of those random different color small lines you are seeing the red blue those are just a t c or g those different colors that means they are probably not real but what are probably real is if you look at the very left or the very right you will see a straight red line some something like a red line uh, let's say look at the left side you will see a straight red line that means actually that red line is everywhere in the uh, let me uh, and do this here so if you look at this area here right this area here you see this this red uh, lines you can see that red in every reads that means for every read you have some mutation there that is different than in the sequence so can you go uh, can, can you please zoom on that area which area uh, the, uh, can you see this annotated on the top left uh, where uh, this area? I think it is gone now. What was the location? Do you remember? Uh, I think it was close to 17,000. Okay. Uh, even more. Yeah, uh, I see. I see one there. Yep. Uh, so you can actually zoom there. Yep. Yeah, even more. Yeah, this is the maximum. Yep, that's great. So now you can see that uh, uh, in, in the reference genome, at that place, it was C. Uh, if you look at the top and down, but you are you are seeing T in almost all the reads. That is why you see this T over there. So that is one of the mutations that we are talking about. So it is very that you are also seeing some random C and T uh, on some other reads, but they look very random, right? So they are probably some sequencing error and those kind of things. But that T in that position looks very consistent. So that means there is a SNP, there is a mutation. Uh, in this sequence uh, from the reference genome. So that is how you view. So, but again, uh, we are not going to scan like we are, it's, it's a 29,000 base pairs. So we got lucky and we zoomed in this region and we saw this SNP, but that's not how we are going to see the SNP. So we are, we'll use some program to call the SNPs, we'll, we will do tomorrow. And then after we see the SNP, then we'll come back to this one to visualize. Most of the time, what we do that way. But because we now visualize today, maybe we'll not go come back here and visualize tomorrow. But this is how you can visualize uh, SNPs or if you have any indels. So um, I don't see here, uh, here but sometimes you, it will, you will say I, that might be just the insertion, or sometimes you might just see some gap, which is the deletion. So uh, go ahead and, uh, you know, start looking for the IGV viewer, uh, Google it, uh, and, and you can start understanding what this different kind of plot means and all those kind of things. Okay, uh, thank you Dr. Prasile. So what time is it now? Okay, it's 11 or nine, so we have five more minutes. So uh, if you have any questions, please let us know. And and any comments from uh, uh, Dr. Powdell, Dr. Parajuli, uh, Mr. Subedi? So uh, for those who want to check out IZB, I have posted a link on the chat box if you wanna go ahead and download that. And you can use your bank files to visualize it later. so uh some some questions here again so let's go and look into some questions uh uh and so first uh, uh seems like the past uh, report so that's great uh and, and
Uh, what is the common for sorting BAM file? It is the uh, SAM tool sort. Uh, I also just see that from uh, uh, Dr. Powell. That's great. Uh, what is the prerequisites and the homework do you expect us? Uh, whatever we did today, if you can do some of these things today, you know, going around, playing around your directory, creating any files, uh, map, uh, and, and if you can download, uh, find, go into the NCBI and find some coronavirus sequence and uh, download the new file um, and, and, and you know, you don't always have to even do that. Uh, if it, for, you know, for some reason, if the past few DOM doesn't work, you can also, uh, there is a way to just download and transfer to your computer. You can do that way too. Uh, and then, you know, doing this mapping alignment, that will be great. So uh, if you could do that, that will be great. Uh, if if fast queue uh, report is not good, then what should we do? Uh, we should uh, just ask the sequencing company to sequence that uh, data again. Uh, most of the time that is the sequencing, that most of the time it will be a sequencing problem rather than the library problem. Sometimes there might be library problems uh, uh, and, and you know, on yeah, we have to regenerate the data there is no fix the other thing sometimes what people do is sometimes out of the 400 million pro cells uh, in a pro cell 400 million different cells in the illumina maybe half of them might go bad and you might still use 200 million reads uh, so in that case there are some programs called fast text clipper or um, uh, what are the other fast fee some some programs which can actually filter your reads by the quality yeah trimomatic is another popular one uh which one or trimomatic, trimomatic. Yep, yeah exactly trimomatic mm -hmm. okay so i think uh, we are towards the end so uh, uh uh you want to add anything uh here Okay, so uh, then uh, I would like to invite uh, Dr. Cordelia or Dr. Luntil again to give some feedback and then uh, we'll end the session again. Okay. Are you hearing me? Yes. 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 Uh, uh, okay. Uh, it was a nice presentation today. Nice uh, presentation come training. Hands on uh, uh, workshop come training. Uh, it was really interesting. Uh, before I was lobbying, I was advocating about bioinformatics in Nepal. And then uh, we, we both, Imal and me, uh, Rashid, you, you, you guys, very brilliant guys. Uh, you are doing this uh, sequence align, this sequence analysis, or almost you are a genome scientist. So um, I hope our uh, participants uh, learn a lot, and then they are motivating. They, this this session uh, has ignited them to learn more, and then that increases eagerness to to learn more in coming days, and then. Uh, or from my side, uh, I have uh, nothing to say, uh, or nothing, no, no, nothing uh, to say about any comments or some uh, no feedbacks. And then hope uh, this is only ignition for coming days, and then it, it increases the eagerness to learn more. And then hope uh, some participants can uh, contact you, you guys, in coming days privately. And then uh, we are planning to uh, organize some. Uh, specific uh, training in specific uh, alignment, sequence alignment, or some application of this bioinformatics. Uh, uh, so it's nice, but uh, I feel some uh, beginners are, are still in confusion, and then uh, it's no worries. It's it's first time uh, you are uh, learning this this techniques, and then uh, our experts uh, will be in touch, and then they will help you or our center for biotechnology uh, also we'll organize uh, different trainings and then we will coordinate you uh, to other scientists and then that, that's all uh, so uh, again and again i'm saying we are very happy it's, it's beyond our expectation uh, so thank you all
Ahmad, would you like a four? four? Okay. 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 Uh, you, I think you can you can take uh, some other feedback from participants also. Okay, so uh, thank you, Dr. Kadaria. Um, I, I see some of the comments is still uh, there. Uh, is the host server available throughout the day? Yes, uh, it will be on. So keep on practicing. Uh, it will be on. Uh, it will be even on at like two, three days after the after our session is uh, session is ended, and then uh, you can always ask us any questions here. So any of the, any of the moderators here, you can ask questions. Uh, and, and it would be probably better to copy all of them so that you know if someone doesn't have time maybe the other one can apply, reply uh, and the recordings would be uh, yes available we'll make it available uh, i also see the uh, share the linux code maybe that is something uh, we can do we'll try our best to just summarize the copy and and, and the email like the we we did for the ppk code uh, maybe just make the course today we'll try to do that as soon as possible uh, I think other than that, again, we are really encouraged and this is, this is way you, we, we don't expect someone to, you know, start Linux today and do a export in the band matrix analysis tomorrow, right? But you have shown that it can be done. I al we already see more than, you know, 15 or so people, ha you know, have the SAM or BAM files in their folders. So that is really encouraging. So, you know, I, I, I know for sure, like in a lot of us here, we already, we have probably, we, 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 some of me, like for me, I may have done this for maybe 10 years now, or, or some people have done it for two years, or some people, but just for, just for a month. So don't worry, don't worry, you just need to know 10 commands, and then you need to know how to Google. The main thing is just don't blindly trust on the informatics and the computer. The key is the problem here is not the bandmatic sports and the current. The problem is actually your understanding of the biology. So understand your biology, understand your biological problem, understand your what is the problem you are trying to solve. Bandmatics is easier. So uh, the biology is the harder one. Understanding the biology is harder. Okay, Ananda. Yep. Okay, Ananda. Yep. I, I would like to one thing ask uh, you. So what about our uh, certificate uh, distribution policy? Would you like to say something? Yeah, sure. Uh, I'll, I'll let Dr. Powell talk about that one. Okay, so there are a few discussions about uh, who will be getting certificates. I think uh, for the first uh, two days of training, everybody who has participated for more than 70% of the total time, I think they will get a certificate for a participant and uh, for uh, all of you who are uh, joining today and who will be uh, joining tomorrow, we will have a kind of a test uh, tomorrow end and you will be able to complete that test we will get the certificate. Yeah, I think we, we will send some uh, uh, questionnaire or some uh, for feedback collection. So we should think about this also. So it would be helpful for uh, next training or some upcoming training. So we, we must take some feedback from participants. So uh, we think we should develop and then send before so tomorrow class. Okay, so with that, uh, let's uh, end the session. And again, thank okay. you everyone for coming today.